cabinets. Get her unwrapped. All right, we'll get this on into uh, machine shop, and uh, we have a little better light in there. We'll get you a good uh, close up on it, and let's get it in the lathe, get it dialed in, and let's see how far this weld actually started making this thing run out, or if it in fact is running out, and how good or how much all the prep of preheating and everything else uh, keeps everything uniform and running true. Let's we'll find out. All right, uh, we, we brought this back in. We just clamped this down. We're getting ready to dial this in. I've already taken a wire wheel, kind of just went over the surfaces here so that we got down, we cleaned up our wall. And uh, it took a, a chisel, knocked a few of the little splatters, had very few, but uh, there was a couple on there and I got those taken care of. All right, let's bring you in a little bit closer. And what I've done here is set up a uh, 3 8 tool, uh, piece of key stock against his back. We got this railroad tie here that I've surface ground these a long time ago and it, it, it comes in handy to go ahead and have a surface to go ahead and put your mag base on so you can uh, have a more easy way of, of putting your indicator up here than taking your indicator and sticking it to the side of the ways or something like that. So this is a, just a little easier doing it this way. Alright, so let's bring it in and Show you what we got here all right i'm going to uh i'm bringing you in at this angle here so i'm comfortable on my uh chuck and and key here so it looks like well we got about 10 maybe 10 thousands run out there doesn't have to be on zero and we just want to make sure that we are pretty equal on the tension this one here we can loosen off all right here we come down, we're on the low side. Back to the high side. Okay, we're fluctuating probably about a half a thousandth there, and we're going to call that good. And we're in the the um, live center on the other end. Now let's go ahead and check our dimension in the middle. We're going to check the peripheral here first. And uh, we're going to roll it this way here, a little less vibration. That register is running within one and a half thousandths. All right, let's see what we got on the face here. Okay, there's a uh, there's a start. We're going to call this our, our jaw one. There's zero. In line with jaw two, we're like three. In line with jaw three, we're three again. Jaw four, we're three. And then back to our zero. Now, let's go ahead. Let me go through this again because we're at the zero here. Okay, zero on the face, and we're zero there. And what I'm trying to do is find out the run out of this face in relationship to the run out of the peripheral there. And we're starting at zero, and then as as we increase our face readings here, we're also increasing our peripheral. So if we were able to actually take the four jaw and adjust our peripheral from, from this point right here back to where we're running true, we're going to lessen the amount off of this face. Now, 
this face here is just a, a skim cut across there. There's not enough run out in the peripheral to affect this bolt holes or whatever. So we are, we're, we're virtually pretty close, but uh, at 2000 RPM spinning, I, need, I want it to be closer than it is right now. Let's take it one step at a time. Let's go ahead and dial this zero. Okay, I'm gonna live with one half thousandths fluctuation. It's only in one spot. Not enough to really make a difference on it. I mean, you know, what we were pushing it half to three quarters of a thousandths over and that was it. Um, I didn't really expect it to make too much difference there, so um, now let's go ahead and let's, we're going to go ahead and go back up to the chuck and actually see how much it took to dial this in and what it did to this end. That the little waviness that you see in there is because of the harmonics that I had at that cut range there, but that's what I mean. We're just everything is all roughed out. I'd say that's that's a good three. All right, so we we were within like one when we dialed it in there, but uh, um, we're gonna live with this right here. We're gonna machine that in to uh, to run true with that register. All right, so let's get ready to machine. All right, we're dialed in where we want. I'm, I'm giving it a run here so you can get a chance to take a look at it. <clears throat> and we're running through with this surface right here. And we're gonna go ahead and come in here and we're gonna pretty well finish off this side right here in all dimensions. And have a, a, an area right here where we'll be able to put a steady rest. And we'll be able to chuck on this end, steady rest here, verify that we are running perfectly true here. And then we're going to test that center on the other end to see where it's at before we start machining on that. All right, let me bring you in for a view looking straight on here so you can see that. And then we're going to go ahead and get started up. Now I am going to come in here because we've got some more material to come off of here slightly. I'm going to come in and we're going to blend some of these welds right here. I believe that that, that weld area should be smooth and somewhat polished, the same as these radiuses right here. And that's what I'm going to give this and this. I'm glad I'm glad we went six passes versus just the three and I think we're a little bit beefier. We have room to play. We don't have to take this right down the same size but we do want to go ahead and bring it up in there so that we don't leave any stress rising areas on that critical joint right there. Now here's a good look straight in so you can see that it's not walking out here or here. You know I think it it does pay off to go ahead and have a combination of machine and weld complementing each other. There is no other way to really keep, uh, you know, we got to keep, this is a machine surface and that's a machine surface right there. Everything else has to relate to those two items right there. Now we can take a skim on this. That 5,000s off that face is not going to make a difference on any strength or anything else. That is going to be one of the last things that we'll do is actually face that face. giving you a couple of different angles out there so you can actually stare at it in relationship to something still like the laid bed or over the top and now there you can see the virtually straight running shaft as well I mean it might have a couple thousands run out on it kind of jumping in here what we have is a, this is a high speed radius tool bit I just went in and kissed it on that cup wheel just so that we had a crisp edge around here and uh, we went ahead and took our scale brought it made sure that we were slightly below center what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and kiss off this weld right here we want to start touching it we want to see what this thing is going to be doing what kind of a problem we're going to have with harmonics and vibrations and that kind of thing. So, anyhow, we're about 133, I believe, on our RPMs. And I'm not putting any coolant or anything else on here. And I don't know, is that... Okay, it's not too bright with the light in there. I need it myself uh, in here. And what we're doing is we're just barely touching off. And hopefully, the weight of this thing...
with the interrupted cut. And uh, we're just coming back and forth on the tops of those welds. Double check, make sure everything's tight as we're going. as much wall as we can. We're just trying to take the high spots off, bare minimum. That very top wall was a little lumpy, but hey. We're going to be getting in there with a little uh, dish tool or a little port polishing tool. You notice I don't just plunge that radius tool in to create a radius that. I'm, I'm actually moving it forward and back and in and out come along with that radius just so I can work it a little bit at a time and keep the tool bit contact down. And you keep the harmonics and the vibration all down. Okay, those are just a little bit of the lows right in there between the beads. That one was a little bumpy there. Okay, we're starting to hit in here. And you can see it is, is, it is a chatter, rough finish there. All right, but we've knocked down some of the big stuff out of there. All right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a skim cut across this top right here uh, to create that round into this diameter right here. And establish a smooth run and steady rest diameter along here. Just giving you a show of the rough cut and a little different angle here before we go on. pointed that radius right in there and it came about 30,000 shy of where that face is going to be. Now from here to about three and three quarters or so that's the that's the diameter for the bearing and we're going to go ahead and we're going to start taking that down to size and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go in and take a plasma cutter uh, the plasma cam and we're going to create a um, tracer pattern to come in here and do this radius and the other radius is needed here uh, so that we can we can um, single point that radius in there with the tracer attachment given less chatter and vibration and we'll come out with a better more uniform radius all right so right now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to start whittling away We're going to 
gonna go ahead and speed it up here. We're getting a little bit of vibration. I just want to try to get above that vibration. So we're gonna spin this thing up to 450, and um, we'll keep it in our regular course, normal course feed of about 17,000. close to dimension there they, they got the bearings in they're gonna run one of those over uh, we're at uh, two inches five sixty nine and uh, you know this is gonna be uh, two and seven sixteen so it should be two four three seven five um, and actually I think I measured uh, about three seven uh, three six five Four three six five something like that on the uh, the original one. We'll be comparing it when we get close to it. But I'm trying to get this down real close, and we're going to go in and we're going to play with the plasma cutter, and we're going to set up the flat pattern maker back here, and uh, we're going to be playing around with the radius. But uh, I'm going to take another cut here, and then we're going to I'm going to show you a little bit of hand roughing, like I I played in here already with a little hand roughing, and uh, I'm just going to show you the you know a little bit of how I play around with it. Let's see uh, what we say. We said uh, 540. Uh, 544, something like that. Okay, I don't know how well this will work or vibrate while you're there, but we're going to give this a shot. Okay, I've turned my uh, tool bit just a little bit 90 degree approach to my part here. Now we're just going to take and we're going to whittle a little bit of this by hand. We are going to take and make up our pattern with a tracer attachment um, to go ahead and do the finish. But uh, I just wanted to show, we're just going to whittle a little bit of this away here so that we, we don't have so much material in it. Just show you a little bit more of uh, just maneuvering it by hand. almost like milling with the bridge port and you're controlling your X and your Y with two handles. And as you're bringing it forward, you're cranking out. And then you'll, you'll learn that. And you kind of look, you can look at over, like look over the horizon to the part. And uh, you can see convex, concave.
sometimes you might feel more comfortable only going in one direction. We just got our cord down here a little bit. And we're gonna have to blow that off a little bit before we put that back together. I can see chips down in there. And I loosened this up and just let this swing down here because we were coming in so far with our stylus uh, with it up in the air like that one there, uh, you know, like that, it becomes it, uh, interference. All right, now we're gonna swing this down this way here because we're bringing in our flat pattern maker and we need we need some distance down here we still got a pattern in there we got we got to pull that out coming all the way down somewhere in there all right we're gonna get the air all right we're gonna go ahead and take this pattern off of here and put it on the storage area here and we're gonna go we're gonna bring in our stylus and we're gonna put it in position so we can create our our next pattern and we've learned that we can go ahead and plasma cut our slot so we can adjust forward and back in fact actually in this radius here we, we may actually put an indicator against the end of it and be sliding it for our feed in closer to this plate or closer into that register there. All right, so let's let's get this in a position and we're gonna see what we need to create a pattern. All right, I've drawn out uh, what I wanna cut out and we're in position here, a little exhaust and action. Operation <laughs> uh, uh, almost, whew, almost cool enough to hold. All right, this surface right here is pretty smooth, a little sanding, and I think uh, the stylus is going to come and it's going to do a real nice job on turning this. I'm probably just going to use my uh, uh, porting tool just to give that surface there a little smooth surface without changing the shape. These ought to have clearance to slide on those, give us plenty of room. This surface right here and this surface right here, I angled those in both so that it'll guide along and it, sh and it shouldn't touch any of the shaft uh, before the radius and anything after it makes the radius, it'll be coming out from the plate. All right, let's go, uh, let's go mount that up and see how it does. All right, I'm going ahead. There's our mark right there and it looks pretty good. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and we're just we're lightly putting these in here. Okay, and we're gonna be able to put it back and forth. This sticks out farther than there, and you can feel we're thicker here than we are down here. Same thing there. That looks good. Okay, well the tracer follows our pattern perfect. Now we just need to get our pattern moved in, and that distance right there is what we need to move it in. We need to move it almost five-eighths of an inch forward. I just came around this other side here with the camera so you can see how far we actually are. From there to there, about five-eighths of an inch. This scale's three-quarter inch wide, so you can see what I'm talking. All right. Okay, this really, uh, if this comes in, this is pretty easy. We don't have to remake anything. Uh, we have plenty more room to travel this uh, back <clears throat> or aft towards the tailstock into the lathe and basically we figured out we got five eighths of an inch we want to actually um, move back that way and we <clears throat> have another setup 
four, you know, every every four inches is another set of holes. So we just tap one more hole down and move our jig down, and then bring the whole rig this way here, and be able to, uh, you know, use the same jig here in the right uh, location. So we got plenty of time. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna undo this and slide the whole rig down this way. We got a temporary setting back there that we know we have some clearance and we got our, our tool bit um, <laughs> before before we do anything okay I did tighten it down I mean that is very important and um, we're gonna go ahead and run it in reverse we're gonna run it at the same speed and we're probably gonna go just uh, Let's, we'll be playing with our speeds a little bit here. The speeds and feeds. They'll come in, create the radius, come out. See, I've got it about a sixteenth of an inch clearance. All right, now we can speed it in. So we're touching. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and feed in increments. Right, let's go ahead and wipe off our gauge there. Alright, you can see I, I wiped off all the, uh, the marks there. Now I'm not going to put oil on here uh, right away because I want you to be able to see what's going on here. And I'm not going to be going that fast and I'm worried about really burning up a bit here. thousands. Um, I'm just going to give it a try here. Nice. Now it, we can just back it back down the way the tracer works and everything else we don't skip across that path so I can just break it down. If I wanted to, I could set zero on my dial, go out, come back, and come back in. We may do that later on, but right now I'm, I'm just going to go ahead. We're going to give it another 30. I'm going to give it a light coat. That's a... Uh, That's pretty smooth. When we get down to the final, I'll probably make it a little bit less feed. Alright, feed it back. Give it another 30. 35 this time. Just so we're back to zero on our dial. This is a this is a good this is a, this is gonna be nice coming in and machining that radius right in on this weld right here. Um, that is gonna be the ultimate, and they'll polish up real nice too. All right, we'll continue on down. set my dial at zero on the lathe there so that I can come out, come back in. Uh, just because you gotta relieve the chips, clean the chips out.
boy, it sure makes a nice, pretty radius right there. My insert might need to be changed. I'm going to go ahead and index that. We'll see what we get. <laughs> 